Chapter 11 You shall therefore love the Lord your God and keep His charge, His statutes, His rules, and His commandments always. And consider today, since I am not speaking to your children who have not known or seen it, consider the discipline of the Lord your God, His greatness, His mighty hand, and His outstretched arm, His signs and His deeds that He did in Egypt to Pharaoh the king of Egypt and to all his land, and what He did to the army of Egypt, to their horses and to their chariots, how He made the water of the Red Sea flow over them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord has destroyed them to this day, and what He did to you in the wilderness, until you came to this place, and what He did to Dathan and Abiram the sons of Eliab, son of Reuben, how the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households, their tents, and every living thing that followed them in the midst of all Israel. For your eyes have seen all the great work of the Lord that He did. You shall therefore keep the whole commandment that I command you today, that you may be strong and go in and take possession of the land that you are going over to possess, and that you may live long in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give to them and to their offspring, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land that you are entering to take possession of it is not like the land of Egypt, from which you have come, where you sowed your seed and irrigated it like a garden of vegetables. But the land that you are going over to possess is a land of hills and valleys, which drinks water by the rain from heaven, a land that the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are always upon it, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And if you will indeed obey my commandments that I command you today, to love the Lord your God and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul, He will give the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the later rain, that you may gather in your grain and your wine and your oil. And He will give grass in your fields for your livestock, and you shall eat and be full. Take care, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Then the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you, and He will shut up the heavens, so that there will be no rain and the land will yield no fruit, and you will perish quickly off the good land that the Lord is giving you. You shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, talking of them when you are sitting in your house, and when you are walking by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, as long as the heavens are above the earth. For if you will be careful to do all this commandment that I command you to do, loving the Lord your God, walking in all His ways, and holding fast to Him, then the Lord will drive out all these nations before you, and you will dispossess nations greater and mightier than you. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours. Your territory shall be from the wilderness to the Lebanon, and from the river, the river Euphrates, to the western sea. No one shall be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will lay the fear of you and the dread of you on all the land that you shall tread, as He promised you. See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way that I am commanding you today, to go after other gods that you have not known. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land that you are entering to take possession of it, you shall set the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. Are they not beyond the Jordan, west of the road, toward the going down of the sun, in the land of the Canaanites who live in the Arabah, opposite Gilgal, beside the Oak of Morah? For you are to cross over the Jordan, to go in to take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And when you possess it and live in it, you shall be careful to do all the statutes and the rules that I am setting before you today. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and a report about him went out through all the surrounding country, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll, and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him, and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land, and Elijah was sent to none of them but only to Zarephath, 
in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. Hello and welcome to Bible Time. Today, Deuteronomy chapter 11. Moses continue in telling them the most important thing for the people is to love God and obey by keeping all of His commandments and His laws, reminding them that they witnessed how great God was in delivering them out of powerful Egypt, that He was leading them to the land that is far greater than Egypt. The reason Moses reminding the blessing and the discipline of the Lord is not only that they know how great God is, but also to remind their children who did not experience what they experienced in God, that they were to teach their children that God who is Almighty. And also we find in this chapter Moses is telling them the way to be blessed by God and there are a way where they will be cursed. Now, the blessing of the Lord is a promise when they obey commandments of the Lord your God. But there will be a curse if they do not obey His commandment and worship false idols, that worship any other gods, they will be cursed. Thus, the people of Israel was to be careful to do all God has commanded as they enter into the promised land. Now, Luke chapter 4, verse 14 through 30 today, Jesus returned to his hometown after fasting for 40 days and being tempted by the devil. On the Sabbath, he goes to a local temple and began to teach the people there. He read a passage in Isaiah where it says that how God is sending the Messiah to proclaim the good news to the poor, set the people free, give sight to the blind, and etc. And after reading, Jesus said, this is now fulfilled in him. So the people were saying, hey, who does he think he is? We know him. We know his family. He's just a son of Joseph. Now Jesus then said to them, the mercy of the Lord was not only for the Jews, but also extended to the Gentiles, and that he is not welcome in his hometown. This really made people upset, and they got mad. They wanted to kill him by throwing him off of the cliff, but Jesus escaped from them. Now the question then is, is Jesus really the Messiah? Is the one God has promised? Now, just by saying it does not make it, right? Just because Jesus says, I am the Messiah, the Son of God, does, does not make Him a Messiah. But we need to examine further. We need to know if Jesus will fulfill, just as Isaiah prophesied. Is He proclaiming the good news to the poor? Is He going to set people free from their sin, shame, and guilt? Is He going to give sight to the blind? Is He the one who would set people free, those who are oppressed? Let's continue to examine this as we continue to study the book of Luke. That is Jesus the Messiah. And we know that He is. He did all those things. He fulfills the prophecy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for Your Word. We know that, God, You not only claim to be the Son of God, but You have act and fulfill all the prophecy that is made about the Messiah. You did all those things. So, Father, help us to know that as we examine more and more about You. In Jesus' name. Amen.